Okay, Dan. Well, we're going to um, go ahead and start with the process here. Now, a lot of the stuff that I'm going to do um, between the watches um, is essentially uh, just off camera stuff generally. Um, but I thought I would try and do a little bit of it here so that you can see it and, and everybody else can as well. Um, so what I'm going to do is begin by tearing down the um, 77 watch and take all, of, all the components off and apart. Just leave the movement and we'll set the movement aside. We'll set the, uh, the inner chapter ring aside. And then when we get ready to do this one, uh, those parts will go in. So let's go ahead and start breaking down the watch. Okay, so there we go. You can see your click ball on this one is actually uh, between 10 and 11. A lot of times uh, that's the case on the early ones and uh, for most and probably even this one, let me see. Yep, the click balls over here. So this has a uh, click ball off to the off to the left instead of to the right. All right, so lots of gruck and grime in here, but we're not going to really take a whole lot of time to clean. We're just going to get in and get in and get out because this is a this is a time a time. Um, job <laughs> not really a flat rate just gonna do what we can and get things taken care of so lots of lots of grimy stuff under your bezel which is fine to be expected not unexpected for sure all right so keep clean in here make sure no no dirt gets into the movement or anything like that So I've got your crown unscrewed. We go ahead and remove remove the crown. Actually, I'm going to take your, your rotating uh, weight off so that we have a nice uh, nice flat surface, and it's easier to do the dial in hands that way. So let's just take this off and set it aside. Now we take your stem out. And your retaining ring. Okay. All right, so now let's go ahead and make sure this is all clean. All the surfaces are nice and clean. And there it is. Dial in hands. Okay. So now we can remove your hands because what we're going to do is going to move it, remove the hands and dial, and that will free up the movement, of course, to be used elsewhere. pieces together, of course, so that we can put them back on to the other movement and store them in this case. Okay, there we go. What's nice is also we get to see the date on the back of your dial here to see how just how original this one is it looks pretty darn original to me
seven one. That's January of seventy seven, and the date here is March seventy seven. So definitely an original dial. And look at that English Roman looks nice. All right, so that's your movement to go in. Take your stem, put it to the side. All right, we're gonna put that over here and cover that up, make sure it stays nice and clean. All right, so next stop is to remove your crystal and your gasket and then that reveals your slightly better, actually much better. That's a very nice insert. Okay, so we'll set this aside for the reconstruction of that movement and case. Right, so now this one. So this one's going to get seals and uh, the movement. So let's do that. All right, so I'll go ahead and actually take the movement out first. Get this old seal out of here. We'll just do a nice hand clean of your movement, or I mean of your case. So that'll come back to you. And like the other one, I'm going to go ahead and take the um, weight off. Okay. So we're going to take out retaining and your stem. That will come back in the picture in just a second. All right. So there that is. That's a very nice dial and handset. Okay. So again, let's protect the protect the dial. Wait for some time to elapse here. Tick, 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 tick. It's good to have these aligned as much as possible when we use the Presto tool to, whoops, to uh, remove the second hand. There we go. Come on. Make your way around. Okay, let's time this right. There we go. Okay. I know. So here we are. Let's go ahead and take this one down. And there it is. Nine zero. So that's October seventy nine. Wow, nine zero. There it is. All right, so that one's correct amundo. And there is the movement. Go ahead and take your crown out again. All right, so that one goes off to the side here to be put into the other case. Right, so here's your chapter ring that's going to Go to the other side of the table, so I'm sort of keeping 77 parts to the left and 79 parts to the right, just to make sure everything is the way it should be. So let's go ahead and take off your rotating bezel. We can see where the click ball is. Ooh, a little bit of rust. That's okay, and it looks very surface. Okay, so here's your click ball. Let's look at the differences.
Look at that. Click ball here, click ball here. 77 watch, 79 watch. Interesting. Okay, let's go ahead and take your bezel off. Okay, yeah, you do have some some rust, some surface rust here. Um, we'll get that looked at very closely. So we're gonna have to do a little bit of cleaning to get this the way we want it. Yeah, I'm fearful that you've got some some issues here with rust inside, just because of the way that your gasket has stayed in place. Usually, if it's yeah, boy, okay. Yeah. I think you have some surface pitting here. But perhaps it's okay. Perhaps. Perhaps it's just surface. I'm a little concerned, I have to say. The problem with rust is that it's. Yeah. Ooh, we. Oy, oy, oy. Uh, some of that is probably oh man all right well this case um, this case has seen better days uh, it's actually in much much worse shape than this case um, uh, well that's a conundrum I'm gonna have to send you an email and figure out what to do all right well we're going to put this process on pause. Actually, I'm going to just go ahead and remove out the... Oh boy. Right, let's see if this will come out without being a pain. There we go. Yeah, these two are sort of fused together due to rust and water intrusion. Oi. Okay. Well... I'm not sure this mid case is the one to hold on to as the as the one for the good watch. I'm going to run this through a clean cycle and uh, maybe put it in some uh, rust remover just to kind of get a sense of what the pitting looks like, and then we're going to come back and in the meantime we're going to we're going to send an email and see see what you'd like to do. But if you can. If you can see here, there's some real pitting around your ceiling surfaces. That, that's all rust. Um, so we may be better off using this mid case instead of this one. And we'll let you decide. Okay, uh, off to the cleaner and then we'll come back. Okay, Dan. Well, um, just one thing I want to point out for those who are watching, and for you, of course, uh, is that when it comes to um, to bezels, turning bezels, I never, ever, ever, and I recommend if people are going to clean these things, take them off and clean them, I never put them in a sonication bath. I never, ever do that. The reason is, I always hand clean them, uh, and it's really just comes down to a, a wet tissue or a wet... Um, Q-tip, and you know, I really go to every click spot and get in there and just get the grime out um, by hand, because what you can see when you turn this over, and there's nothing that separates your insert um, from moisture, right? So if you put this in a sonication bath, all that beautiful patinaed loom right there is just going to fly away into your into your water and then you're screwed so don't ever do that um, I want to show you this extremely stiff <laughs> extremely hard um, o-ring supposed to be a piece of rubber that's nice and soft but as you can see cracks in half so that's why those things are loose because that has shrunk down and become 
to be hard piece of plastic. So I go around, I, I stay away from the loom pip, and I go around by hand and I clean, clean, clean all of this stuff. So every 6309 and 6105 and etc. 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 that have you know been living on somebody's wrist or in the water or somewhere, it, this stuff accumulates. But you know, if you stick it in just the old sonication bath and let it rip, you're going to be in big trouble um, because you can never get that loom back. So just go in by hand and very patiently just work your way around, get up to the loom pip, kind of get all the little corners and things very, very carefully. Um, but don't ever soak this in, in something that has an agitating kind of sonication cycle. It will, it will lead you down the path of frustration and sadness. All right, well, we're going to finish this up. I've got some, some toothpick picking to do and some other kinds of cleaning, um, but we are going to get this nice and pretty on the inside. Of course, where nobody will see it, but I will see it, and I know. So, that's it. That's my two cents. <laughs> okay, so Dan, these are, uh, again, steps that I usually leave out, but um, because we've, we've got, um, you know, this as the main, main service component of the watch, that is the case things and other, other stuff, I want to just point out what I do. Um, so here is your crown uh, and stem components. This has a two-part uh, stem with a, the spring and a rest washer and your um, actual stem that goes inside the movement and the uh, crown stem that lives inside of your, your crown. Uh, and these all connect up. The thing we're replacing, of course, is your, uh, is your gasket. You can see the cross section of this gasket is almost a square. Right, that's very flat looking and sort of, you know, sort of terrible. Um, what we're going to replace it with, of course, is not that. It is a, a lovely donut that's round in cross section, circular in cross section. And, um, and that is what we're going to put in place. So let me show you what that looks like. One here. There's your replacement. Of course, the exact size and uh, all of that, but but this one is a lovely little squishy donut. Boop. Just flew over here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean this inside and then put this in place and then reassemble with a little bit of thread lock and we'll be good to go. Okay. Okay, well, uh, next step, of course, is to put your crown and stem components back together. So we will begin doing that. So first your spring goes on and then your rest washer goes on. Okay. So here's how this goes. What I do is I put the rest washer on top, grab a hold of your stem, and I take my needle nose tweezers here, and I push down on your washer, and then I grab the stem, and I push all the way to the crown. And then I take this component, and I slide it so that it is in its proper place on the crown component, crown stem. And then I let the, let the tweezers rest against this. And then I give it a nice, sharp, And then if I just get it like that, it's perfectly in place. So that's my method for reinstalling. 
pretty straightforward. It's a little scary, but it works. All right, so that's the crown rebuilt. So that's for your 77. Or 79, 79. All right, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put your movement, dial, and hands together for the watch that we're gonna assemble to be the 79. All right, usually I also don't do this on camera, but I figure what the heck. Let's have a look. These are nice to do, so we're gonna do it together. All right, so this again is your 79 October. This is your 77 movement, which has your English Roman wheel. That looks pretty good. We're not servicing, we're just reassembling. So we've got to put your dial spacer in place properly. So that snaps there. Make sure there's no extra stuff coming along for the ride. No fuzz or dust. Okay. And then your dial gets a little clean up. All right, so now crown is at four. This slides down into place. If everything is right. Yep. Almost. All right, let's back those screws out just a touch. Sometimes there's a bit of interference here, but we will work to ensure that everything is fine. Okay, so that, let's put this in place. Sort of snaps in against the movement. Okay. Now we align and make sure that goes right as it should. Ooh. Come on. This is why I do this off camera. <laughs> Just kidding. It's a, it's always a bit of a delicate dance to do, just to be sure everything is as happy as possible. So there we go. And yes, there we have it. Okay. Sorry for all craziness but it takes a bit of work even for something as simple as this it remains a challenge I have to come over here to the edge so I can do this properly okay let's go to this side Okay, so there we go. Dial on. Okay, now to set the hands, what I generally like to do is utilize a tool that is actually made for chronographs. So it's a dial holding movement holder here. Now this is nice because, uh, yeah, this is nice because it allows me to have the movement retaining ring held in place. So we're going to have to turn the time back over. So I get this very close to midnight. 
which is right here. Then I put this in the movement holder. Okay, so now I grab the hour hand and just click over midnight. There we go. All right, so now the hand goes on. It'll work, work quickly, but not too quickly. Don't want to rush anything. Oops. And then 6309s are nice because they have a nice, nice way of aligning things. All right, so now we use a tool to press the hand home to its proper location. Okay. Good. Okay. Make sure everything's clean. And now we go around and we can align here and then we can put the minute hand on. Okay. All right. Because these are so wide, you really have to be sure they're both flat and parallel to the dial. All right, that looks quite good. <coughs> okay, now we check for interference. Make sure that these are nice and parallel to each other, which they are. Okay, so we should see good alignment at nine o'clock. We have to check it at a few spots, of course. So that looks really good. You can see that these hands, of course, have an extension off the arrow, and then there's the there's the sword at, at midnight, and then there's a a little extension off of the six and the nine that allows you to align the align the hands. So it looks quite good. Okay. So then we click over midnight and there we go. Okay, so that's good. So now the second hand can go on and that's just a really simple thing. It's not like a quartz where um, that can um, lead to an issue. Let me let me just touch this with a little bit of um, solvent. Okay, so now that's in place. We can just give that a little push. Send that home. And we're all set. Okay, so that's movement swapped. Now we just need to get your case rebuilt. Um, I'm still soaking your 79 case in some rust remover just to make sure that that any rust that is around the um, sealing surfaces are is is neutralized uh, and that way um, we don't have to worry about it uh, coming back or being being a problem in that regard of course it's going to limit the ability of the watch to retain any sort of water tightness not that there's a you know, a guarantee or a ability to do that after 40, 40 years of plus years of, uh, of use. Um, but, um, you know, we definitely don't want rust to, to pervade and that's, uh, that's what we're going to try and avoid. So once that's done, we will get you reassembled, but we're going to put your 77 back together. You don't really necessarily need to go through all that. Uh, on camera, um, but just know that it'll it'll be done in the same way this one was. All right, um, but without all the resealing of things. Okay, thanks, Dan. Okay, Dan. Well, uh, we've got your case out of the 
rust remover. And you know the pitting here is is pretty pretty severe. Um, you know not that these watches should ever really go near water in the first place. Um, now that they're approaching 50 years old, uh, but certainly um, ones that have this level of of pit um, definitely need to be protected. Um, you can see where the water got between your seal and your case and just sat there. Even though it's stainless steel, it still undergoes this fairly substantial uh, rust. Um, here's your ring. <clears throat> A lot of times rings like this will fail if they get weak and uh, you can see there's fairly substantial loss of material right in here. Now we we have uh, eliminated the rust. Um, it's actually a chemical process that turns the rust into a, an oxide, uh, another type of oxide, a hematite, I guess, or whatever. Anyway, so <clears throat> the chemistry is not important. What's important is that um, it's been stopped, but, but um, you need to be careful. Certainly, certainly very careful with this watch. Okay, so now let's just get it back together. There's a fairly straightforward process. Um, and you sort of have to build the, build the case around the movement for these because you want to make sure that everything is, is settled. Uh, so let's do that. Right. So let's do that. So that requires that we take the, um, take the movement and we set it into the case and get that locked in place with the movement retaining ring and the crown and the case back. All right, so let's take your crown and stem out. Okay, so you can see that's your sort of naked movement. And now what we do is we put this in place and you can see there's actually a cutout here in the case where this tang sticks out and that is what aligns you with your, uh, uh, with your chapter ring. Okay, so let's get that nice and clean. Make sure there's no dust or debris anywhere. All right, so what I'd like to do is go ahead and get the uh, crown and stem back in place. Maybe even give it a turn or two. All right, then we can flip over and we're not in danger of the, um, of the hands hitting anything. They're, they're actually uh, within the movement itself or within the case. So now we can put your retaining ring back in. And while we're in here, I'll go ahead and put your winding weight back on. Just takes a moment here to do that. Okay. All right, so now we can put your case back on and I'm going to go ahead and put your seal in. Well, I'll put your seal in a, in a minute. I just want to make sure we get this get this buttoned up here. Okay. So there's your movement secure within your case. Right. So now the chapter ring, original the ring from your 77 and you can see it drops right against the movement or the dial and uh, holds that down okay so there's your gasket retaining plate here's your Viton original gasket comes with your watch 
Okay. All right. So now what we can do is put in your crystal. And what we will do is we will take your crystal and press it into the gasket, making sure that the gasket stays in its proper L configuration here. And then, let me clean this up one more time before we put it into place. Try and get any residual residue off of both sides. Not that we can't clean it a bit, but it's always nice to start as clean as possible. All these things. Right, all right, so here we go. We press that in, even or all the way around. Make sure it's Uniformly press down and that your gasket isn't crimped or pinched anywhere in a weird way. I think we're looking pretty good. Hmm. No, I'm not quite happy with that. Let's come back off. Okay. We don't lubricate this gasket, it goes in dry, as does the crystal. We want there to be, yeah, that's it. Don't want any material between them. And you gotta go just straight flat. You don't wanna dig in because, boy, you could really accidentally drive this thing right into the right into the dial in hands. You don't want that. Okay, so now your bezel has a a thumb cut out, thumbnail cut out, that goes here like this. And then we're going to snap that in place and we'll be right back. Okay, Dan. Well, we are ready to put things back together. So I've got two new gaskets here, one for your rotating ring, which is the larger one, and one for your case back, which is slightly smaller. So now we just fit this into the groove. It's been lubricated with some silicone grease so that it will rotate well, but also be nice and tight against your clip ball. Yep, that's what we want. Okay, so let's get that cleaned up a little bit here. Okay, so that's that. Now, take the case back, back off. We will install your lubricated case back seal. Now this sealing surface is good. It's in great shape. It's just your bezel, it just sat with water under it for too long, unfortunately. Okay, well, that, sir, is job done. Um, all right, so let's just review. Uh, what we've done is we have done a swap. Essentially, we have taken uh, a movement from your 77 and put it in your 79. Um, we've, and we've taken the movement from your 79 and put it back in your 77. So it's good storage for that. I haven't done anything with the case or the seals or anything with this. This is exactly uh, as it came in. We also took the uh, movement, um, what's well, actually the, the chapter ring from this watch and put it in this watch and then vice versa. So now this one presents a bit nicer, I would say, in terms of all of the details. Um, it's a great little watch. I mean, these are just so clean and nice. This too, I mean, this is a good little watch. I think that with some TLC and some attention, this will, you know, it's a first year, First year watch, and it you know it deserves to be um, in good shape. It's a it's a cool cool example. So uh, that's where we are, Dan. I appreciate um, you getting this to me, and I'll be happy to get these back to you. 
uh, and um, we'll be in touch. All right. Thanks for watching. Take care.